Greetings and God's peace be with you. My name is Christopher and I'm one of the priests at St. Francis Episcopal Parish. This is uh, one of our daily offerings of spiritual sustenance. And uh, in today's reading of scripture, uh, this daily practice that we've been involved with over the last few months, uh, we were looking um, yesterday at Philippians 2 and and then over the next couple days, we'll be in, in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. I wanted to focus first on um, this passage in Philippians 2. It's a really powerful one. The heading in our reading for today uh, refers to imitating Christ. I wonder, for you, in your life, what does it look like? What does it look like when you choose to imitate Christ in your actions? Maybe that's something you think about every day. Maybe that's something you think about throughout the day and the choices you make. Maybe that's something that you don't think about as much as you'd like to. And perhaps that's never occurred to you before. It is the call um, of the Christian life. It is, um, it is, it's what we've, been asked to do it's it's what the commandment the great commandment of love that's what it takes as its form in as we uh, on this um, on these days after having received the good word that uh, we are now officially called saint francis episcopal parish i think a lot about uh, the life of francis and how he chose to live his life in a very radical way um, as close to what he um, thought um, Jesus's life was. When you spend time looking at the gospel accounts, you read the way that um, the way that he lived, the people that he surrounded himself with, the ministry that he did in feeding people, in healing people, in um, in loving them uh, wherever they found themselves. I wonder what that looks like in my life. I wonder what that looks like in yours, especially as we live into this new identity um, as St. Francis. So we're told um, in this letter from Paul to the church in Philippi to put on the same mind, to let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. I think it's easy to have these words just gloss right over you without really taking them in, but Paul is telling us that we should have the same mind that was in Christ. What does that look like? How do we do that? What are the spiritual practices that lead us to that? What does it mean to set aside ourselves and our own, um, our own ambitions, our, our selfishness, um, our own needs, and to put ourselves more fully in God's hands, to realize that when we strive first for the kingdom of God, that all things will be given to us. And when we put ourselves in that same mind as Christ, this call to serve emerges naturally out of that. This love of neighbor emerges naturally out of that. It makes the impossible love that Jesus calls us to um, to love as he loved, it makes that impossible thing possible. Because when we are one with Christ, all things are possible. Of course, this isn't an easy thing to do. It's, it's a challenging thing to do. Um, uh, we are confronted with, uh, with things throughout every day that, um, that invite us to make different choices. So how do we ground ourselves spiritually in that love, in that mind of Christ? When 
we ponder the incarnation, what it meant for God, the creator of the universe, to become a human being, to enter into human form in Jesus, to be born in this profound humility, and to live life, to experience every aspect of human existence, to know suffering, to know betrayal, to know loss, and to show us the way through that, a way that is grounded in love, that chooses love instead of hate, that chooses to give selflessly, that knows um, that there is something more than just these physical forms that our souls inhabit. Now this is tough work. This is the spiritual life that um, we need. We need our entire lifespan um, to really make any complete progress on. And even when we come to the end, even if we hope, um, even if we, uh, we hope we've done the best we can, we know we still fall short. And God loves us in that shortfall. God loves us in our sin and receives us. Paul talks about how we are called to do this, to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you. This isn't just about us. God is doing this work in you and in me, enabling you both to will and to work for God's good pleasure. As we turn our wills over to God, and God does this work in us, powerful things are accomplished, but not without difficulty. Paul goes on to say, do these things without murmuring and arguing. This is a seemingly impossible task for us as human beings. I, I know for me in the hardship that I experience on a day-to-day -day basis, it's, it's easy for me to complain. It's easy for me to get stuck in the ruts of life, to wallow in the mud. But Christ calls us because Jesus entered into our human experience, into that messiness, to rise up out of that. Not in a way that transcends it, but that recognizes that being one with Christ means that we are one with all of creation. It means that we are so much more than flesh and blood. And when we find that same mind that is in Christ, when we remember that we are part of the body of Christ, we remember that it is God doing this work in us. All things are possible. It might not feel comfortable. We might complain and uh, kick and scream sometimes. We're told at the end of this chapter that um, that Paul wants to send um, another of our, our brothers, um, um, Epaphroditus, I believe is, is what his name is. Um, and this um, fellow laborer in the vineyard has been, to, um, been through great hardship and he has nearly died. And he wants to return to the, the church in Philippi, this church that he loves, because um, he's been out on these missionary journeys because he misses them. He wants to return because he misses them, but he, he's also been changed by this experience. He's been changed by the hardship of life, by the suffering of life, and he has felt what it means to have that same mind that is in Christ. And so he returns to them, having risked everything, um, having given him his all um, in the work of God, he wants to return to them to tell them that story, that good news. I wish that I could live in that spirited, faithful way, that courageous way that gives my all. For you, as you turn your life over to God this day, as you um, seek the mind of Christ, I wonder what that looks like for you. I'd love to talk to you about it. I pray for you and I ask your prayers for me.
at the end of Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. It's only four chapters. Paul says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. As we live into the love of God, the command on our lives, as we live into this new identity in St. Francis, may we learn to evermore imitate Christ in all things. Because it's in and through him that, um, that we can accomplish anything. Thanks for listening. God's peace be with you.